My fellow Americans, in these 2012 debates each of us have come here to explain why we're better suited to run this country for next four years. I'll start off by asking you the same question Ronald Reagan asked Americans in 1980. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Has the present administration really served the interests of the people, or has it in fact done more harm than good? Or do you think it's time for a change? Excuse me, but change is my slogan. I've been selected. I mean, elected to bring fundamental change to the United States of America. I've been elected to stop the evils of capitalism and spread the wealth around. Under my watch millions of jobs were saved or created, everyone has health care, the banking industry is under control and the auto industry is solvent again. These are major accomplishments my opponent could never achieve. Let's take a look at those list of accomplishments you tout, shall we? Your administration has been hostile to business from day one. You constantly berate American business and have sought ways to tax and regulate it into oblivion, yet you wonder why the economy is so bad. Then, you seek to tax successful people so you can reward those who voted for you and your party with wasteful spending on fraudulent stimulus bills. Government can't create private sector jobs. You didn't create any employment besides government jobs. And every government job takes money from the private sector, which means there is less capital for businesses to hire people with. But if everyone worked for the government there would be no unemployment. I am trying to achieve that goal. An economy depends on businesses in the private sector to create the wealth needed to run it. A socialized government extorts more and more capital from producing people until the system collapses. That is why socialistic countries are forced in time to move to free markets. Russia, China, even Cuba has been faced with this reality and are in the process of changing. Yet you want us to follow the failed policies of those countries which are already abandoning such foolishness. You have been given the most powerful job in the world and have used it to hurt the fortunes of millions of people. That is not a legacy, that is infamy. But thanks to me everyone is covered by our national health care plan. You would have people dying in the streets. Your so-called plan robs a trillion dollars from Medicare and Medicaid. It forces everyone to pay for health insurance whether they want it or not. And you admit this is a tax. It is not only unconstitutional. It was forced on Americans without their consent. And it levies not only many new taxes on them it now threatens them with an army of IRS agents and fines if they don't comply. It will force many doctors to leave their practice and will create wait times in hospitals that will rival Canada's. You and your cronies have systematically destroyed what was once the greatest health care system in the world. But I saved the auto industry. There were thousands of jobs saved or created by my actions. You loaned billions of dollars to two auto companies, and they turned around and gave some of it back in the form of loan repayments so it would look like they were doing well. That left them with a multi-billion dollar slush fund which made them look solvent. But it is the public's money. You illegally had the unions get preferred status in the bankruptcies. You even gave them seats on the board. So, not only did you illegally give favored status to the same unions that caused these companies to fail, you used the bailouts as a way of laundering tax dollars to fund Democrat coffers. You sound like that nut job, Glenn Beck. The next thing you're going to say is I am a Kenyan Muslim communist. No, that was your father. And many of the mentors in your youth were also communists. For some reason you are attracted to the ideology that is responsible for more deaths and suffering than all the wars of the 20th century combined. It is no wonder that under your presidency the American people have suffered so much. They didn't suffer from anything I've done. I inherited the economy from George Bush. Yes, you refuse to own up to your own failings and blame others at every opportunity. You don't lead either by example or deed. Yet you expect voters to re-elect you based on a series of cataclysms you call achievements. My many achievements were done in between all the vacations and the links I played. What could you possibly do that would be better? You're as noisy as one of Michelle's outfits. Most of the bills you take credit for were actually the work of Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid who labored day and night to get them passed. 
All he did was give endless TV speeches and yell at people behind the scenes. Unlike you, I wouldn't spend my time thinking up new ways to steal Americans' wealth. I wouldn't have creepy czars scheming to go around Congress so they could disenfranchise our citizens from their freedoms. I wouldn't have the government try to take over the internet or the free press. Whatever. As for me, I would work to restore limited government which is what served the people for over 200 years. The greatest period of wealth and prosperity in human history was achieved in America by a limited government, free market system. The kind you are trying to change. The people voted for hope and change. You can't reverse the progress I've made. You mean the destruction you've made? Well, I have a slogan for you. Yes, we can. See, you have no ideas of your own. You just steal my slogans. I, on the other hand, have saved America from bankruptcy. You put us on the path to bankruptcy. I offer Americans the choice to return to the color that best suits this nation. And not the one you love so much. Color? What is this erased thing? What color do you mean? America needs to return to the black and not sink into the red. Ouch.